Hi guys, today I am here to do a review of Emons. E Monster Calls. Hi guys, today I am here to do a review of A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I feel like I'm losing my touch because once again, I, I don't have very co co coherent. I don't have clear thoughts. So I'm just going to talk it out. Okay, so I'm going to read you the summary first up. It says. That is my glasses. It's my glasses. The monster showed up after midnight, as they do. But it isn't the monster Connor has been expecting. He's been expecting the one from his nightmare. The nightmare he's had nearly every single night since his mother started her treatments. The one with the darkness and the wind and the screaming. This monster, though, is something different. Something ancient. Something wild. And it wants the most dangerous thing of all from Connor. It wants the truth. I knew how this book was going to end from the moment I read the summary. I don't know if you do too, but like you might be guessing how it ends by now. I'm just I think I think most of us know. So I was very excited for the experience and it is a novel inspired by an idea from Cioba Down and um, she died before she could actually she could actually write the book. So Patrick Ness took it into his hands to write down the story. And I love that in the beginning he says he said, I felt and feel as if I've been handed a, a baton. Ba baton? Like a particularly fine writer has given me her story and said, go, run with it, make trouble. So that's what I tried to do. Along the way, I had only a single guideline, to write a book that I think Sioba would have liked. No other criteria could, have, could really matter. And now it's time to hand the baton on to you. Stories don't end with the writers, however many started the race. Here's what Siobhan and I came up with. So go, run with it, make trouble. Uh, I, I love that because it's, it's, it's so true. Stories may start with the writer and they, they just publish something and then it's out there for everyone to decide what they think of it, what they do with it. And I read this book with a friend, uh, with Mario on Goodreads. We read it together, we really loved it and um, we were both discussing as we read it and we both had very different ideas as to what the monster was and what was happening and I love that because I, I, I mentioned this in my Night Circus review but often uh, you feel like we were all sharing the same thing but reading is such a personal experience we all uh, experience a book differently a story affects us in different ways Personally, I thought that this book was just so beautiful and for a moment there I was worried that it was going to be triggering. Thankfully it was not. Can we please just look at the design? It's so beautiful. I highly suggest you get the hardcover because no page, no no single page is exactly the same. Each one is very different and very beautiful and I just love it. It really enhanced my reading experience. So, the story. Uh, there's a monster this big guy over here that comes every night to visit Connor at 12.07 in the morning and he from the beginning you gather you know that he wants the truth he is very frightening but Connor is not afraid because he's the, not the monster he was expecting as I read in summary but the monster is still scary nonetheless because he wants the truth that Connor refuses to give so to me the monster to me personally the monster itself represented the truth uh, there's this part that I bookmarked that I really really love because he's talking to Connor and he's like you will give me the truth he says you will tell it for this is why you called me you will tell me the truth and Connor says and what if I don't and the monster gives an evil grin and says then I will eat you alive that's a metaphor that's a great metaphor uh, it was so so amazing metaphors like I bookmarked a lot here it's just so full of metaphors and so great and so dark. I think that almost everyone in their lives experiences something where the truth is just too much to handle and you don't you're, you don't dare yourself to let it out and eventually secret, secrets tend to way to have a way of being really harmful to you and um, might be really early on in your life it may be later on in your life but I've had my own big secret that really uh, ate me alive for quite a while. I've talked about this before. It's a very, very open thing with me. But um, I, 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 when I was around six years old, I was being sexually abused by one of my aunts, and uh, that really affected me. That really, really affected me. But I totally just sur po 
post-traumatic stress came into play and I basically forgot all about it in my head. I, I didn't remember it, I didn't know about it, and it was just too much to handle at the time. I was a kid, so I basically just kept it hidden in some part of my brain. And when I was 16, I remembered, and that was so horrible for me. That was so hard and heavy for me to deal with, and I just kept it locked inside. And I, and I was just like, Shh, I, nobody can know this because it's, it would destroy my, my mom, it would be so painful, so everything. And I kept it inside for three years until I was 18. Uh, yeah, 18, when I was, I, I, I finally dared to speak up the day right after my 18th birthday because my secret was literally eating me alive. I was at a point where I couldn't even talk to my mother because I, I, I felt like if I talked to her, I, the secret would just spill out. And so I, I wasn't talking to her, I was in avoiding, so I was crying all the time. It was so, such, such a hard time for me. And to this day, um, when I actually told her, that's, the, that's been the hardest thing in my whole life. But um, it, it was a time that my own monster let me go. I'm not trying to make this like really deep and dark and scary review for you. It's very normal for me to talk about it now. I've come to terms, terms with it. I have worked through my recoveries and my issues and stuff so I can speak it out loud without problem. But I definitely had my own monster haunting me and it ate me alive for two years. Two very straight solid years and it was hard. It's really hard. So I could relate a lot to Connor in that, and I and that's why I was scared it would be triggering. I thought I would feel so bad or something, and I would get depressed, and I didn't. I'm so happy to say that I didn't. I I cried at the end. I definitely cried, but I cried because of empathy, because of Connor and what was happening and how the ending went, but not really because of me. So it tells me that I worked really well through my issues, and that makes me so happy. It's a powerful story. There's a blurb in the back that says it's brilliant and elegant and it's definitely, it's definitely elegant. I really loved that. Um, I had never read anything by Patrick Ness before. I've heard that he's a great author, but the only thing that I, I've ever actually kept in my mind by his is the Knife of, Letting, of Never Letting Go series. And I read the summary of those books and they just don't sound interesting to me. I, I've not read a blurb or anything by them, or like an, an ex excerpt, expert, what? or like the first chapters or anything. It's just that the story does not sound interesting to me. It's not appealing to me. So I've never read them and I've never read anything by him before, but I just recently bought more than this by him. So um, I will give it a try to more Patrick Ness. And if I like that book, then I will jump into the Knife Never Letting Go series. I will totally jump into that. So it was my first Patrick Ness book. I gotta say it was really good. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna talk a little spoilery things. So um, those of you who've not read it, bye bye. Thank you so much for watching. Do let me know in the comment section if you've read anything else by Patrick Ness. If you liked it, if you already read it, stay tuned. Keep keep watching. If you haven't, um, I highly recommend it. I think it was a great great book. It's really thin. I read it so quickly with my buddy. So yeah. Go read it. And to those of you who are staying, I hope you've read it. Um, all I want to talk about, honestly, and the, uh, the only thing I want to mention is that when, when the, the grandma and the dad and the mom are not telling Connor the truth, it kills me. It makes me so angry because I know that the mom is being hopeful and she doesn't want Connor to suffer. She's only harming him a lot more by not telling him what's going on and not being clear with him. And it just made me so angry and I felt so powerless and I was like, why won't you talk to him? I, it's just, ah. But I also get Connor. He's 13 years old and when I was 13 years old, my father had cancer. He lived, thankfully. Um, but I remember that the day he was getting operated to get out the tumor, I, I didn't went to the hospital. I went to school because in my mind he was going to be alive. You know, I never once thought that he would die. Oh, not once. I, I was like such a big denial. I was like, no, I'm going to go to school and everything's going to be fine. My dad's gonna be fine, and everyone's going to live, it's gonna be awesome, and yeah, there's no other way things can go. So I totally understand Connor on that, that aspect, you know, he didn't really want to see the truth for what it was. Sadly, he had to see it. I was, I was too blind of a kid to understand it at the time, but looking back on it right now, I'm like, oh my god, my dad could have totally not made it, and I, and I was like, what? It's so fine, it's perfect. We lie to ourselves in that way, it's, it often happens, and I just thought this book was great, awesome, you guys read it, I hope, 
I hope. So, you know what I'm talking about. And, yeah. Yeah. The one thing I didn't get was the thing with Harry. I, that, that never, that was never explained. Did, did he know? He know someone with cancer and had gone through something similar? Or what the hell? What the hell? But yeah, I also loved, really, really loved the four short stories that the monster tells because they just offer so much perspective. Like now as I'm a big grown ass human, uh, I, I can still, I still learned a lot from this. So yes, I, I hope that if you read it, you enjoyed it. And do let me know in the comment section stuff that you thought of. Leave a spoiler warning. And yes, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. Can you hear that? It's like it's cracking. It's cracking.